don't forget we have our eyes on the visit of the United States Secretary of State, uh, Antony Blinken, who is meeting with President Bola Tinubu at the presidential villa. I'm being joined from our Maiduguri studio by Senator Ali Indume, a member of uh, the National Assembly. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sam. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, give us an understanding. There is a rise in kidnapping. Uh, you chair the committee on the army, and we've seen this kind of situation. And the borders one. That why is these? Uh, why are these kind of violent activities happening? We are being told that there is an influx of some of these bandits from the some part of the north the northern region into the FCT, and given a feeling that the FCT is perhaps as not as much as not is not as safe as it used to, uh, it should be. Well, the truth of the matter is that we still have security challenges in terms of the personnel that are supposed to manage the security sector. Once you have enough boots on ground and security, intelligence and everything, it doesn't matter where they come from, um, the security agencies or uh, whichever will stand up to them. The problem is that our security agencies are not fully capacitated. They are not equipped. They are not trained. They are not motivated that much that they will face these security challenges. The earlier we realize this, that the main purpose of government, I have said it several times, I'll continue to say it, is security and welfare of its citizens. The government should concentrate on that and get the country secured so that everybody can sleep with his two eyes closed. But where do you think this connect uh, went wrong or the disconnect suddenly from November or October uh, last year up until now the insecurity situation is, uh, is now very deteriorating? It's not sudden. The security challenges we have been facing uh, it dates back to um, as early as 1999 or so when the Boko Haram started from the northeast and it keeps on transforming. Then the bandits uh, outside join the forces and uh, it's getting out of hand really. And the solution to it, as I said, is to get enough security agencies that will face um, these people uh, squarely. Right now, we don't have enough security agencies or um, uh, personnel to handle the situation, whether it's Nigerian Army, Nigerian Air Force, Nigerian police. In fact, some of these issues are supposed to be handled by police. Uh, security as you are talking about going after bandits or you know Boko Haram and all those um, uh, unknown gunmen, it's supposed to be the work of uh, of, uh, of uh, the police. And uh, we don't have the number of police. They are not trained. They are not equipped. They are not well motivated. How can they do the job? And what well, is about budgeted Senator, to under 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 your committee, you um, you did oversight on the army in purchase of. Uh, some sophisticated weapons. So it took a long time. The lay law uh, barred us from being able to have access to some of this, but we looked in other direction under the Buhari government to be able to acquire some of these uh, equipment. We thought that some of these surveillance and some of these fighting gadgets and, uh, and flying uh, elements will help us to be able to arrest these elements that are terrorizing our country. And we thought that this will work. Why has this not happened? They are not enough. Well, it's just like a drop of uh, water in the sea. They are not. This place is not as versatile as the attack helicopters. So they are not even enough. Their number is not enough. The training is not that the major challenge is in the area of team, as I said, T-E-A-M, training, equipment, ammunition, and motivation. We don't have the number. We only have 200,000 uh, uh, Nigerian armed forces. We only have 
uh, I, I think less than 400,000 police. We have all put together, the Nigerian security agencies put together, we don't have up to a million of them. We have over experience with vast, uh, you know, uh, area to cover. You can't do that if you don't have enough number to face and then to man the situation. There must be deliberate training, equipping, arming, arming the, 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 and then motivating. And the most challenging thing, for example, is that all the security agencies, I did a, a, a small research, their first entrance, like the recruits, are paid less than 50,000 in some cases. How can you pay somebody uh, money that cannot buy him a bag of rice and you expect him to go and sacrifice and do put in his best? How can you pay a Nigerian army, for example, allowance of 1,200 as his daily ration, uh, ration uh, uh, money and then pay, uh, pay him 2,000 naira only as, uh, as, as DTA and put him in the theater? Some from from Lagos, Oyo Ondo, moved to Meduguri. Uh, their parents are expecting that they will send them something monthly. And you pay the guy uh, 50,000 naira or less. Uh, this, these are the major challenges that the but, government but Senator, has rise up to. Yeah, and Senator, in all of this, let me ask you pointedly. From the, your understanding of, of things, uh, it doesn't look like anything has changed since President Bola Tinubu got into office. The security chiefs were saddled with that responsibility to change things around. But little or less have we seen from what has happened in the past. And this is not taking any credit away from our gallant officers on the ground who are every day confronted by the bullets of these terrorists. But the question is, if there is anything that the president must do now, what should that be? Urgently. What president must do, number one, is to review the, uh, uh, the salaries of the Nigerian Armed Forces. That is number one, because it, has, it was last reviewed in 2008. We are in 2023. We should review the salary of all the security agencies. We should increase the number of security agencies, especially police and the Nigerian Army. We should equip them adequately, and then we should motivate them by, for example, somebody, a civil servant sitting in office moves uh, around a day, his DTA is about 30,000 or more. And then you send somebody to the bush and then you pay him 2,000 as his DTA. That can't work. That is the truth of it. And the purpose of government is security and welfare. We have to be serious about the security situation in this country. Let, let, let me, let me, let me bring this challenges. matter, Senator, to your table. There are those uh, of the view that you and your colleagues are perhaps not playing your fundamental duties and role as, the, as lawmakers in oversight. For example, in monitoring the timelines of operation, uh, you are the former chair of the army. For example, did you know yes. the timeline or the time frame of some of the operations of the troops on the field? Are you able to monitor them? If they are not achieving the, the, the set target, are you able to do your oversight properly on them? There are those who will say, you are the representatives of the people. If there is a failing of the security agencies, have you put them up to task? These are some of the questions that some Nigerians would like to ask you tonight. Can you put somebody that is not adequately equipped, paid, and motivated to do the job? I mean, if we, our own oversight would have been if they have everything they need in order to face the security challenges and in order for them to effectively do their job, then we talk about oversight. So how can you, how can you talk about oversight uh, when you just you give a, a, the Nigerian army, for example, in this year's budget is 700, uh, is it uh, uh, maybe 700 and something uh, billion? And you are talking about oversighting. Oversighting what? Give them the money, give them what they need, then you can even give them a matching order. And uh, what the president did uh, recently, for example, is that he will not tolerate failure. You can only say that when you give them what they need in order to execute or to achieve uh, their goals or the assignment you give them. But I am telling you, I'm not being pessimistic, but with what the Nigerian army or the other security uh, agencies are being paid or what they have, I don't expect them to perform any magic. They must have the equipment, they must have the training, they must have uh, uh, 
the, the adequate motivation for them to lay them there like they have already been doing that. We have been losing many of them. And uh, you can imagine people coming in rack tax called bandits or Boko Haram or whatever, you know, killing our our youth, uh, our youths that are determined to defend the country. But, but they Senator, can only do that. To, to cut him quickly. There are areas that the government or those in political office have failed Nigerians terribly in terms of trust. For example, there is a point in this country where the government told Nigerians there are terror financiers and they know them. They have their names. We saw a retired general who experienced, who was supposed to get uh, the, 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 the late chief of army staff, who is pointing out to say there are highly placed persons who are behind the terrorism in this country. And yet, they are not uncovered, yet Nigerians do not know them, yet they keep perpetrating the evil. You saw what the Honorable said earlier about what is going on in Plateau, a deliberate attempt, according to him, in wiping out some people because of commercial purpose. If government knows those who are funding terror, why are Nigerians not knowing? What is difficult to let the Nigerian people know those who are killing are behind the killings of uh, innocent Nigerians? Well, the question you're asking is the same as the question I would ask. If they are actually identified terror financiers and those behind these things, I don't know why the Nigerian government or whoever is responsible for that. It is not if Ndume knows that social persons are behind this you can be rest assured that i'll come to channel and name them if i have the info from information so the government is, is supposed to be doing that but don't go away from the main problem now the main problem is that bandits are everywhere terrorizing people killing people the nigerian army is even being killed and they are being overwhelmed operating in 35 states with no guns up to now i have not gone to the field and 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 and, and see uh, a, 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 a Nigerian soldier holding a new AK-47, just common AK-47. But you can see the bandits branding out new AK-49, not even 47. So but, but the budget the government thing doing? looks a bit different now. The budget of 2024, security is yes. getting about 12% of the 2024 budget. But again, yes. uh, if you and your colleagues, 109 of you in the Senate, 360 in the House of Representatives, speaking for the Nigerian people, if in truth you are doing that, and they're asking tonight that if we know those who are funding terror, those who are funding the killing of innocent Nigerians, it is, not a, is it not a failing of a government who said he's serving his own people that these people have not been named? Who is keeping that? It's a deliberate attempt so, to, to make sure that we spend a lot of money in funding security or insecurity, as the case may be. People are dying every day. People are being kidnapped every day. Nigerians are impoverished. The people are, that are leading them, they, are, they don't look like they care so much about it. What is the government or political office order doing differently? These are very fundamental questions. Well, you're asking the wrong person. If I know the list of the people funding uh, the terrorists, yeah, would you let maybe those people that even said so are in Abuja there? Why don't you go and ask them? I'm doing here in Meduguri right now. If I had known that social person is but a some of the service here. chiefs, they come into the chamber. They come into the chamber. Don't I mean the president declared some kind of state of emergency or full security? I mean, can't we declare a state of emergency on security in Nigeria? A governor declared curfew on one of the local government. Fundamentally, we have a major crisis on our hands, and we are behaving as if there is nothing going on. People are being kidnapped in the FCT, and we are behaving in this nation as if nothing is going on. I am with you on that, but you are talking to the wrong person in this case. I was thinking that you just want my opinion on some of this issue, especially that has to go uh, do with security and the performance of the Nigerian Armed Forces and other security agencies. And I'm telling you that they are not performing. They are doing their best, but their best cannot go anywhere if they don't have the equipment, the training, and the motivation. So the government should be serious. And when you are talking about giving them 12%, what is 12% when the uh, other 88% of it cannot be useful? You, 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 you construct roads 
and people cannot go because kidnappers will pick them up on the road. Why don't you secure the place first? I don't, I'm one of those that support, even if we are to give 50% of the budget to the, uh, for security, and let us be secured first. Let us be secured first because that is the main purpose of government. Even if the National Assembly that you are talking about is to be shut down in order to secure the country, and let's go back home until the country is secured, that, I am supporting that. Senator, let me take you away quickly from uh, from issue of security. But uh, we are hearing some reactions coming from uh, the upper part of the country uh, in respect of uh, the decision of the CBN to relocate some uh, units and departments into Lagos. Uh, under the aviation ministry, the fund also uh, is also thinking of doing the same thing. But it does look like some northern elites are not happy with it. Is there a consensus? Uh, about these, uh, this notion? Yes, it's not only about Northern colleagues. You know, this is a consensus because we only have one federal capital, and that is Abuja. All these Lagos boys that are thinking that Lagos is Nigeria are just misinforming or advising uh, uh, the president wrongly. The regulators of the financial institutions are supposed to be or are in Abuja. Do you want them to move? back to where because you say uh, uh, Lagos is the uh, commercial uh, capital. This is one of the mistakes and I'm sure me, Mr. President will reverse it because it doesn't work. Uh, you can't have two capital. Is the CBN uh, governor going to be operating from Lagos and the headquarters of the CBN is in Lagos? Or do you now say, now say that because uh, oil, ma majority of our oil is extracted from South-South, you take an NPC to uh, South-South? Or oh, is it uh, because Nigeria's agricultural district is more in the north, you take Ministry of Agri to, 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 to anywhere in the north? It doesn't work that way. And that is one of the problems that is cropping up. But I'm very sure, I'm very confident that uh, Mr. President will look at this because he's a nationalist, not uh, just a, a, a Lagos man. Some of these people think that, uh, I'll repeat, think of, some of them think that Lagos is Nigeria. Lagos is not Nigeria. Lagos is not the headquarter of uh, Nigeria. The headquarters of Nigeria is in Abuja. It's not about no. But, but, but they have because explained Abuja that this is, no is for like, operational purposes. Friendly. This is for operational purposes. Which is operational purpose? Why was the headquarters moved from uh, Lagos to Abuja? Is it not because of the congestion it they are talking about? It's not the whole of the CBN that is going to be moved, Senator. I'm I mean, I'm just asking. Uh, the whole of the CBN yeah. is not according to the CBN. It just say uh, a unit or some unit or department is go are going to be relocated to their Lagos office. They do have a Why Lagos don't you, office. No, no, no. That, that doesn't work. If you have to do that, if you are talking about proximity and space, why don't you take them to Nasarawa there, or take them to Kogi, or take them to, to, to Kaduna, just nearby, so that you decongest the place. And I even don't see any issue of congestion. There is just going to be increase in cost, because they will be running from Lagos to Abuja every time, and spending more uh, money. You end up spending more money, or you know, exposing our even the workers to unnecessary risk. This is a decision that is not well thought out, and I think the president will reverse it. I'm confident of that. And if that does not happen, of course this is democracy. We'll know what to do. And what would that be? That is when the president refuses to do that. What would, what would be the reaction? The reaction, of course, is that right now the re reaction is we don't try to bring the issue of tribalism into it. I'm not a Hausa man, and I'm not a Fulani man. But I'm a northerner, and I'm a Nigerian first. And we say that since the headquarters of Nigeria was removed from Lagos because of congestion and because of inefficiency to Abuja, where it's most central, and more of no man's land, because the Gwaris and the Bagis, are the, 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 the Gondora people are the only place. We have enough space there. CBN has offices that they can rent or build from in their own to increase efficiency. But moving some departments to Lagos is not uh, the best of uh, ideas at all, or moving any agency on that do, matter. Do you think that As this I has said, some political undertone, or it adds some other, uh, other ulterior motive, do you think? No, 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 I don't want to believe that, because I know the president that much. It's just that those political cartels that I told you that are in the corridors of power are trying to misinform the president. And we'll tell the president. The president will take action. He's a man that listens and corrects anything. I'm sure he will do that. 
because there is no any efficiency in it. They don't think, I mean, some of them think that they know better than everybody. They don't know anything. When you don't know Nigeria, you only know Lagos. Then you start doing things uh, as if it, it, in Nigeria is Lagos. No, Lagos is in Nigeria. Senator Aline Dume. That's, that's, that's a wrong decision. Thank you so much indeed. We will not accept it. Yeah. Well, and, besides, you know, having you. Be, and besides, you know, they are not doing any favor to Mr. President because this will have political consequence. Really? Yes. I'm telling you this. All right. We'll see how that goes. Thank and you so much. Guys, and these guys who are just sitting down there trying to hang on to Mr. President will not be there to, uh, to, to amend the political mistakes or even to correct it because they don't know anybody. They only know their offices and they only know that they are they have brains. They think so, some of us that are, it's politics. Was it not politics that brought them into that office in the first place? If Tinubu had not won the election as the president, would the central bank uh, governor be central bank governor? Senator Ali Ndume, thank Mr. you so much. Brought Mr. President to that office. Yeah, thank Who you so much. Brought Mr. President to that office. Yeah. Was it vote from Lagos? Yeah, we, we, we are out of time tonight. Thank you so much, Senator Ali Ndume. Okay. I appreciate your time tonight. Right. A, a pleasure having you as always.